morning guys today maya angelou provides us another powerful thought that we should try to implement today and that is always do your best it sounds so simple but it's so hard to apply but if we can remember it and learn from maya angelou we can have so much success happiness in our life and she talks about um, an example where and somebody was interviewing her on when she wrote her book phenomenal woman and they asked her do you write with a purpose to um to inspire people and she simply said no i just write to do my best with the hopes that that will inspire people so whatever you're doing today look at your day even the simplest thing do it to the best of your ability because you have no idea the positive consequences that can come from it so just do your best wherever you are today think of what you have to do have a great morning everyone have a goal you suffer and then you get cruel and bitter and resentful and then you start to actively try to make the world a worse place. Trying new stuff can be painful, can be comfort zone breaking. It should be, it's new, it's variety, it's different. You're gonna stumble, you're gonna fail, you might get embarrassed, that's part of the process. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. So let's start your day off right together, grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Jordan Peterson. I wake up every morning the suffering is pain and the suffering is anxiety and uncertainty and the suffering is hopelessness but the consequence of all that is that you get bitter and mm. when you get bitter you get mean and you get cruel and you start to hurt yourself and other people so it's not only that if you don't have a goal you suffer it's that you if you don't have a goal you suffer and then you get cruel and bitter and resentful and then you start to actively try to make the world a worse place mm. and so so it, because you can't <clears throat> suffer pointlessly without becoming bitter and you can't become bitter without becoming cruel so you need an aim the question is then the question of course is aim. what you should aim yeah, <laughs> a, yeah, better aim. yeah a better aim <laughs> that's for sure so then the question is what should your aim be it's not easy to, to ask people to say well, it's easy to ask them, what do you want in your life? It's a very hard question to answer because it's too right. vague right, right, and, right. and grand. Eh? So we help in the future authoring program, we help people break that down. It's okay, so here, here's the situation. So you put yourself in the right frame of mind. So what's the right frame of mind? It's like rule two in this book. Treat yourself like you're someone responsible for helping. You're someone that you are responsible for helping. So what that means is you have to start from the presupposition that despite all your flaws and insufficiencies, that it's worth having you around and that it would be okay if things were better for you. So you need to take care of yourself like you're taking care of someone you care for. So there's a bit of a detachment in that. And then the next thing is, okay, so now look three to five years down the road. Okay, you get to have what you need and want, assuming you're being reasonable mm -hmm. and that you actually want it, which means you're willing to make the sacrifices that would, that would make it possible. What do you mean by reasonable? Well, that, that's, that's the next thing. Well, within your grasp, that would be something. What if you something know, is out of your grasp, but you still push hard enough well, to then you need, get it? Well, then you need an incremental plan, Got, right? Yeah, you need yeah, to course. break that goal down into steps Not that you- Not some crazy goal within a year that's like, yeah. you haven't even done the work to master a skill yet. Yeah, I got Yeah, it. well, that's it. And you can have a high-end goal and more right. power to you if you do, but you need frame. it. Yeah. Well, you need a pathway to yeah, it. Absolutely. You know, if, you're, if it's 10 stories up above you, you need a staircase to get there, right? right? And so you have to build the staircase too. Right. I think too many people settle too early on in life for the wrong aim. People settle for the wrong business, people settle for the wrong career, people settle for the wrong relationship because they're in such a rush to get to their aim that they end up with a life of suffering. If you don't know your aim yet, that's okay. It's normal. And maybe you found it but lost it. That can happen too. There may be many times in your life where you don't know your aim. The solution is to taste, is to test, is to try, is to explore until you find it. Because otherwise you live a life filled with regret, knowing that you are capable of more, but you settled for less. So when I was 18, I went to Paris and it was my first time going to Paris and I was super excited to go out and travel. And it was a formative experience that ultimately changed my life. 
one day sitting outside the Notre Dame Cathedral and I had my map open and I'm looking for where I'm going to go next. And this girl comes up to me and in perfect French asking for directions. And I thought she was cute and I wanted to ask her out, but I was too afraid. I was embarrassed. I was, I was afraid I might get rejected. I was afraid I didn't have the perfect words. That uh, French was my second language and I didn't want to embarrass myself. And so I just told her where she needed to go and she left. And I felt so bad about that moment that I took a picture just outside the cathedral and I went home and processed the picture and then I blew it up and put it on my wall. And I had that as a daily reminder for myself that I did not want to live with regret, that I would rather know and fail than not know. And looking at that picture every day as I walk into my basement apartment <laughs> in downtown Toronto, that helped me start my first business. When I was 19, one year later, after a year of looking at this picture, I had an opportunity to join a startup company, have 30% of the equity, make $300 a month, or get six figures starting salary, travel around the world at the investment banking job that I thought I wanted, that all my friends wanted, that we've been studying, preparing for. And I had that picture in the back of my mind. I had that picture calling to me, say, why, why am I looking at this picture every day? It's because I don't want to live with regret, because I would rather know and fail than not know. And so I said, you know what? I can always go and get another banking job. It may not be the same job, it may not be as good pay, it may not be the travel around the world like this one was offering, but I can get another job. This startup thing, I didn't know if I'd ever get another shot at it. I didn't know once I got on the corporate path if I'd ever be able to get off it. And I, would, I felt like I would regret, ultimately, I felt like I would regret it if I didn't at least take a shot. And the most likely scenario was failure. Most entrepreneurs don't make it. And so even knowing that the most likely outcome was failure, I had to go off and do it just to know because I was looking at that picture every day and reminding myself that I would rather know and fail than not know. And that's what led me down the entrepreneurial path. Now, I didn't know it was going to work out. I didn't think it was going to work out. And we struggled and it sucked at the beginning. And I was making no money and I felt worthless as a human being in the early days of my business. But you have to taste it. You have to explore. You have to try. You'll have moments in your life where you have absolute clarity, absolute focus. Like this is what I am meant to do right now. And when you find that, then you have to push hard. Right. That's that's me right now with YouTube and starting on Instagram. Right. That's me right now. This is a moment. In 10 years, YouTube may not even be around. Maybe it's going to be virtual reality having coming into your living room, right? 10 years will be a whole different ball game. But now I have a moment when people ask me, where is it going? I don't know. I'm focused right now because this is my time where too many people are sitting on the sidelines when it's their time. But then when your time is over, when that window of opportunity closes, then what? Then, then you're back to not knowing what to do. And that's when you need to get back on the horse and you explore and you taste and you test and you try and it's messy and most things won't work out. And that's OK, because that's the process. The answer isn't to rush into finding a new aim because that's the recipe for unhappiness. That is the recipe for suffering. That is what most of America, I think, has done. I think most of America wakes up and drives for a job that they hate because they settled way too early in life without tasting, testing, trying enough to see what their actual true aim is. Now I'm gonna give you a three-step process you can follow to find your aim and build the life that you want off of it. Step number one, what's one new thing that you can explore this week? Just one new thing you haven't tried before, you haven't done it before, for whatever reason, you have this idea that's been planted, like I want to try this. What is that one new thing? You won't know until you try it. That list of ideas isn't gonna get any shorter Right? The way to make those ideas shorter is to go off and try it. You won't know if sushi is good until you take a bite and eat it. You can't think your way through tasting sushi or trying a banana or trying that new salted caramel popcorn thing that we got here in New York the other day. It's really good. It's sitting over there, but I can't eat it right now because of my keto diet on Sundays. Anyway, what's one thing that you can pick right now that you want to just explore sometime this week that's new? that's different, that's outside your usual, that's not part of your comfort zone, pick one thing. Step two is how will you eliminate expectations? Part of the problem in chasing after new ideas is we have expectations of it being great. Things won't be great, you will suck at the beginning. Don't expect it to be amazing at the beginning because otherwise you put too much pressure on it being perfect and chances are it won't be perfect. If you go on a first date expecting to marry the person that you're meeting, you're gonna sabotage the whole thing. The acid test should be, do I want to go back for a second date? 
right? Was it, was it interesting? Did I have fun? Do I want to go back for a second date? Same thing with trying something new. When I first started learning salsa dancing, I, I'm tall. Uh, I don't speak Spanish. I take big steps. I, I knew zero dancing growing up. On paper, everything looked really bad against me. I, I walked in my first class and I wasn't very good. I didn't pick it up instantly, but I just liked it. I just enjoyed it. And so fast forward, you know, a decade plus later, I own the largest dance school for salsa, maybe in North America. It's crazy. You can't judge it. You have to let go of expectations. So that new thing that you're going to try out, how are you going to remind yourself that you're going to let go of expectations of it being amazing the first time through? And step number three is what will your regrets be if you settle too soon? Trying new stuff can be painful, can be comfort zone breaking. It should be. It's new. It's variety. It's different. You're going to stumble. You're going to fail. You might get embarrassed. That's part of the process. Otherwise, you photocopy your life and it's just the same day over and over and over and over again and you hate your life. We crave variety. You need it. But it's painful to go off and do new things because you risk judgment, embarrassment, failure. But on the other end of that is regret. If you don't go off and do the thing, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Do you want this current life that you're living right now for the rest of your life? Yes, amazing. You want more, you have to go chase it down. And you remind yourself, at least I do for me, remind myself if I don't go off and try this thing, this is what gets me to the pain and the nervousness and the fears. This fear of trying this new thing, if I don't do this new thing, I'm gonna regret for the rest of my life, I'll put this pressure, for, the, for my entire life, this could be the thing that changes the whole game for me but I was too afraid, I backed down and so I played small the rest of my life. So what will your regret be if you don't go off and try that new thing this week? Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? The science says that when you just watch a video, you get motivated, you get inspired, you have a 35% chance of following through on your goals. 35%, that's not enough, that's not enough just to get motivated. Believe Nation, we're here, you're here, the today matters, you're an action taker. When you commit to a plan of action of when and how you're gonna follow through, when you write it down, you have a 91% chance of following through, and when you commit publicly to somebody else, it jumps to 95% chance. From 30 something percent to 95% chance of you following through, Believe Nation, we need to make this happen. So question of the day, your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action specific for the next week. Put it down in the comments below and I'm gonna show on screen sometime next week to celebrate you. Hello everybody, Anton Crowley here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And before you click the skip ad button and move on. Also, if you wanna learn how to have more confidence, check out my 254 Confidence Series, it's free. The link to join is in the description below. If you're gonna speak effectively you have to know way more than you're talking about. It is my firm belief that each of us have a responsibility to set the world right in the manner that we are able to and that that is a fundamental, that's a fundamental import. I really believe in some sense it's of cosmic import in the same way that consciousness itself is of cosmic import. And consciousness reflects being itself. You write in the book there is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient. What do you say to those viewers that don't pursue their dreams and are locked in their careers because they are too afraid to take risks and pursue something mm -hmm. meaningful? Well, the first thing I would say is, well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. But you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. It's like the first thing you want to do is dispense with the idea that you get to have any, any permanent security outside of your ability to contend and adapt. It's the same issue with children. It's like you're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. And you might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing in five years, you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. But isn't so, it a luxury to pursue what is meaningful? Our viewers have mortgages, they have children, yeah. they have payments and loans. It's well, a luxury to pursue because we, we lack the resources. Well, I don't think, I don't remember now, I'm not talking about what makes you happy. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have 
uh, family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort. I've dealt with hundreds of people in my clinical and consulting practice, and we set a goal, we develop a vision, and work towards it, and it, it, things inevitably get better for people. So it's not a luxury, it's, it's difficult. It's a moral responsibility, and it isn't happiness. It's, it's not, the pursuit isn't for happiness. Well, that isn't how it is. It's like we're built for struggle, us human beings. You, you're not after um, the bubbles of bliss that Dostoevsky described in, in Notes from Underground. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay and stuff.
man You will be trapped to get in dance to the rhythm The king is back, causing all the fuss and stir <laughs> Straight, eyes closed, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feeling that power, that power you have, your determination to control your breathing. that same power, that same determination to see in our minds the image, the visions that we want to create today in our lives. Let's see ourselves doing the best we can on all of the stretches and exercises we do together here. that power we have, our true being, our presence, our determination to see in our mind right now, go into the future. Good morning, Determination. How's everyone doing today? Another beautiful day here, outdoors. Uh, if you're indoors, wherever you are, let's go, everybody. Here we go. Another wonderful moment together. Another great day in the gym of life. Gym of life never ends. So here we go. We're going to start, when I say go, we're going to start jogging on the spot, doing the best jog we can, best jog we've ever done, or we can simply walk on the spot. So depending on how much space you have. We should be able to do this within the space that we have. So here we go. Ready, everybody? When I say go, your best jog ever. Ready? And go. Still 
twist the hard brake. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Feeling the joy of you commanding your body. Remember, you're the boss of your mind. Your mind is the boss of your body. Almost there. Let's go, everybody. Keep going. With the power of our heart starting to beat a little bit faster. Our breathing becoming a little bit more difficult. We'll feel our power still controlling our breathing. And stop. All right, back to our best walk, either side to side or simply walking on the spine. But focused on our breathing, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Oh, wow, what a day. What another pristine, perfect day. Enjoy every moment, wherever you are, enjoy this. Enjoy your power, your gift. And always work on your mind and your body. Always in the gym of life. Okay, everybody, let's start with our 10 shoulder rolls forward. Here we go, ready? And go. So the joy of you rolling your shoulders forward, being able to do that. And backwards. All the way up and around as you can towards your ears, all the way around. Let's do 10. All right, and stop. Let's do arm circles forward, big arm circles. 10 forward. Go backwards again. Just feel the joy of you controlling your body to move through space, all through the power and control of your own determination. All right, good work, everybody. Hands on your hips, bend your knees, and side stretch. Five on each side. for the sky wherever you are. Here we go. Holding it for 10 seconds. All right, and now reach for your toes, straight knees. Again, feel the joy and the striving. Reaching for your toes, even if you can't touch them yet. Always yet. back up. Okay, let's uh, work on our balance. Grab one leg and find your balance. Bend the other knee if you have to. Hold it for 10. Pull that leg back. Feel the power of you. Finding your balance in this moment. And switch to the leg. And bend that knee. Imagine you've got roots growing under your feet, going through the ground. Excellent. All right. And let's hug our knee this time. Bend the other knee if you have to. Big hug. And find that balance again. Hold it for 10 seconds. Lose your balance. You get it right back. But your mind controls your body. You feel you controlling your mind. Right. And switch to the side. 
have balance and can bring that leg up all the way up. Alright, excellent everyone. Let's do five push-ups together. Here we go. That's five push-ups. You gotta keep your knees down, go ahead. Whatever you do, do your best. Five sips. five squats, our best five squats. Here we go. Feet flat on the floor, looking straight ahead, bending the knees all the way down, all the way up. All right, let's do lunges now. Three on each side, best lunges. Turn that back straight if we can, looking straight ahead. Excellent. All right, let's do 10 second plank. Bell these knees off the ground. Always the order ourselves back to our presence our being. Okay, and let's sit down and reach for our toes, everybody. Here we go. Ready? Straight knees or reaching for your toes. Do the best we can. Always working on motivating our minds because we know our bodies will follow and be shape with our legs reaching for the floor as far away from our body as we can holding the thing and reach for one side hold it there again feel the joy reach and strive do your best even if you aren't able to reach where you want to be yet. And switch to the other side. Feel the power of you winning right now. Control the game. All right, and let's put our feet together and gently push our knees down with our elbows. There we go. Hold it there for 10. Okay, one leg forward, one leg back. Go as far back as you can, keep that knee on the ground. Keep that knee down. Make sure you're not hurting yourself. You should just feel a pull, not anything. Okay, and switch to the other side. Or look up at the ceiling of the sky, wherever we are. Here we go. Cobra stretch. Hold it there for 10. Feel the power of your being right here, right now. Okay, and legs crossed again. Back straight. Eyes closed. Breathing in through our noses and out through our mouths. Here we go. Going into the future, into our imagination right now. Seeing what we want to do our best on today when that music goes on. For me, I'm going to be working on two exercises. One is lunges, as many lunges as I can do within the first song. And the second song is many sit-ups as I can do until that song. What about you? See it in your mind right now. You can play two of your own songs. You can listen to the songs I have. But choose your own exercises. If you don't like the ones I'm doing, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, whatever you want to do, whatever movement you want to do safely and effectively, see it in your mind right now before you bring it out into the world. Of yourself, of people, of the world. 
way we do our best on these exercises when that music goes on, it's an expression, a reflection of the way we do our best at everything. Jim. my effort. Proud of you. If you haven't given up, keep going. Alright, sit up for me. Here we go. No matter what. 
you can apply this, you can use this energy, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you read, write, the way you're kind and loving, use determination. Use your power to be positive and never give up. Just like we're doing right now. On these exercises, on these sit-ups, we're not giving up. No matter how hard it's getting. See, we know the truth. If we do what is easy, we give up. Our life will be hard. But if we do what is hard, we never give up. Our life will be easy. So we gotta remember that all the time. That's the power of our determination. Controlling our mind. Motivating the mind. So the body will fall. Keep going, determination. I'm so proud of you, wherever you are. Because you are who you are. Strive to be better all the time. You are infinite intelligence. You, we, are double I. Infinitely intelligent, powerful beyond measure. We don't choose to lose, we determine and win. So, with me, keep going. I love you, I'm so proud of you. Keep going, even if you stop. Get back up, have it again. Keep going. This is the way you're gonna live. Even if you stop, even if you get tired, even if you make mistakes, you're gonna learn. You're gonna get information. And you're gonna eventually win. That's how powerful you are. That's why I love you and all of us. Okay, that's good. Love it. Keep going. Our body will rest and recover. Almost there. Keep going, everybody. Keep going. Oh, well done. So proud of you. Fully. 
to control our minds, to control our breathing, to control our bodies, to control our lives. It's all possible through the power of you being present, staying in the now. There is no past and future right now. I love your determination. Great work today. I'm so proud of you, wherever you are. Take the power of this time we had together, apply it to everything in your life. Doesn't matter whether we're in school, at work, wherever we are. The gym of life never ends. And life is the greatest teacher. That's why I love you and everything and all the infinite intelligence around us. It's life. It's always here. You're always learning, always growing. I love your determination. Have a great day, week, and life always. Until next time. Welcome to Best Life 30, your 30-day journey to creating the best life possible for yourself. You can just watch this video or can sign up for free and get the bonus companion worksheets that go along with each video by checking the link down in the description below. All right, today is day 26 and we're going to learn how to think big. I could book that for like the, the, the weekend of the 14th when the soundtrack comes out. If so, bump somebody. All right, thanks. All right, love you, man. Bye. I got my MTV out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! Yes! What's next? What's next? I got to get it. I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to stay I'm lying down. I'm not. I can't do that, man. I can't do that. What's next? Give me something else. What can't you do? I can do it. I can do anything. I'm taking my Amazon lottery winnings and I'm converting them into reusable rocket vehicles so that we can lower the cost of access to space. Because right now the price of admission to do interesting things in space is just too high. If I look at what Amazon was able to do 20 years ago, we didn't have to build a transportation network. It already existed. That heavy lifting was in place. We didn't have to build a payment system. That heavy lifting had already been done. It was the credit card system. We didn't have to build, um, put a computer at every desk. That had already been done too, mostly for playing games, by the way, and so on. So all the pieces of heavy lifting were already in place 20 years ago. And that's why, as a, with a million dollars, I could start this company. Today, you know, and, and then there are even better examples on the internet over the last 20 years. You know, uh, Facebook started in a dorm room. Uh, I guarantee you, two kids cannot build a giant space company in their dorm room. It's impossible. But I want to create the heavy lifting infrastructure, kind of do the hard part, so that a future, the future generation, two kids in a dorm room, will be able to create a giant space company. Society and folks like me 
put an unfair pressure on people to have a vision, yeah. right? And I think that's true. We're not all Steve Jobs, and we don't all have big, world-changing visions, to your point. I do believe, however, you can find a vision, right? In other words, it doesn't have to be yours. It can be someone else's. We found Martin Luther King. We found Mahatma Gandhi. We found Steve Jobs. We found Richard Branson, whoever you, Elon Musk, the visionaries. And people go, I, I love his vision. So organize your business around that. Right? You don't have to have a vision, but I do believe you have to find one. People find it in religion. You, know? you follow whatever you follow. Right? You, you become a follower of. So you can say, I believe, and you can say theirs is yours. I believe in that. And we're organizing our, our company around helping to build that world. Yeah. So I don't believe you have to have one. I do believe you have to find one. Yeah, right? exactly. And it doesn't have to always operate at a macro level. It absolutely can operate at a micro level. Right? It can be the way you raise your family, the way you treat your friends. How do you come with this idea, actually? Sometimes they're pushing the human limit. You are always pushing the human limit. Why? Well, <clears throat> I, I, I mean, I, th I, I think about what's, what technology solution is necessary in order to achieve the particular goal and then try to make as much progress in that direction as possible. I think the being a multi-planet species and being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity. And uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Um, and if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens. Or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system. Um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring. And there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. And I want people to understand this, dream big, but get yeah. small wins though. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can dream big, but yeah. get the small wins. Okay. And those small, I'll never forget uh, hearing John Elway speak once. You know, John Elway was like, yo, I became great by being good over a long period of time. Mm. You know, mm. and so for me it was, all right, Didi's leaving, mm. she's going to college, if I can get my GED. That's, that's all I need to that focus on right me. now, is let me get the GED. And here's the thing I never realized, by having a girlfriend, it was like, I'm not dating anybody that's selling dope. I'm not dating anybody that's, you know, violent. Yeah. You know, I'm not dating nobody that's carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. So for me- Those were wins. Yeah, so for me, it was like, I didn't even know about being with her, it stopped me from doing some of the stuff that had I not had a purpose, mm -hmm. I probably would have been doing what my boys were doing. Because I was with them, mm -hmm. I just wasn't doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so the GED was the first win. Okay. Then I ended up following her, going to college. Now, our first college was Oakwood, went to a very small school in Alabama. Okay. But then after I finished that, and I, I was speaking at the time, and so now universities are like, um, University of Cincinnati saw me, University of um, Louisville, Michigan State. So Michigan State came and said, hey, all these, uh, these guys like you, but we want to court you. Like, we want you to come get a degree and eventually work for the university. Okay. So I'm thinking high school dropout, you know, I got a four-year degree. Yeah. I go to Michigan State, like, I can make my mama proud again. I'm from Detroit. So it's U of M or it's Michigan State. Right. And so I'm like, yo, I can reverse this thing. My little sister went to U of M. Mm -hmm. So if I go to U of, uh, Michigan State, my mom, that's like house money. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's like, mom could be yeah. proud of me again. Because you know, of course, leaving home, yeah. you know, we get into it. You know, it was a point where my mom was kind of discouraged. Like, I didn't raise you like this. Mm -hmm. You know, so to go to Michigan State, get a master's degree, it's like, yo, I can make mama proud. And then when she came to the graduation all excited, I'm like, hey, I might as well get the PhD. You know, let's, let's just finish it up, bring her back one more time. And some of the pain that I caused her, I'm sure another degree is only gonna make her that, you know, much more. So I just say, man, start with the small wins. Stop right now and let me ask you this. How is it possible that Elon Musk can manage Spanx was profitable from the first month that I was in business. And I, um, I'm in, of the belief system for me in my journey to start small, think big, and scale fast. And a lot of people want to start big and think big and oftentimes get ahead of themselves. And, and that can 
end wildly successfully, but it can also cause a lot of um, problems and you dilute yourself down a lot and you know, then you have a lot of other people you're answering to. So that just was the journey that I took. You know, I mean, is, I started it with five grand. I've never had any outside funding and whatever money I made from selling uh, Spanx, I just put back into the business. I love that. Start <laughs> small, think big. What is it you're really after? And is it after what you, are you after enough for yourself? Are you, are you limiting yourself based on current competencies? A lot of people do that. They narrow their vision or their ambition for tomorrow based on what they can do today or who they are today without realizing they can develop their mastery, their skills, their competency, their knowledge, their experience without realizing they can become a better person. They can live into their highest self. They can live into the type of person who could accomplish those goals, who could have those things. So never limit your ambitions based on your current competencies. Never limit yourself today based on your current inadequacies because those can be irrelevant tomorrow. The main thing is to have aim in life, to have your own aim, to have your own ambitions, not the ambitions somebody told you you should have or, or someone told you you're supposed to be after because that's how we all get on sort of, you know, sometimes a corporate treadmill or we get on those things where we just start trying to live a life that's not even our own because we're just going with everybody. But ambition liberates that. Your individual ambition, who you want to become, what you want to do, what you want to contribute. And the highest forms of all ambition usually come down to your creative expression, your contribution, and your connection with others. That creative expression. What is it you want to create in this world? And, and I mean, get your hands dirty doing, you know? Not just create some PowerPoint once in a while for some corporate thing, but something real and meaningful that you consider art for yourself, whatever that is. Even if it is a PowerPoint presentation, right? But to do something that you find artistic and meaningful, that's our human drive for creative expression. Then, what about contribution? What's your ambition to, to give and to serve greatly for others? What do you really want to give back or give to others? What is it? And what about connection? You know, the ultimate ambition and aim to have, I think for a lot of people, is their relationships. To operate and have a love that knows no bounds. I mean, a love that is extraordinary, that is amazing. You can't improve your relationship with your family or your spouse or those that you serve unless you have in some sense about you that desire to love or give or connect more. So today, get clear. What is it you want? And is it big enough for yourself? Not limiting yourself based off your inadequacies, your competencies, but based on what you truly desire. Last challenge, take whatever that is that you come up with and 10X it. Take it by 10 times. What would be 10 times that ambition? Not just because it's silly, I know, I know it's kind of silly, but to take that ambition that you initially have, which is usually, an, what we usually want is an impulse based on who we are today. And I just challenge people, no, think bigger for yourself because you are immense, you are magnificent, you are powerful beyond your current understandings. So break through that another level. Challenge your brain to think even bigger for yourself, even if it's just as an activity to break the bounds of your current beliefs and behaviors. You deserve something extraordinary in your life, but at first, you have to want it. I think that as you know, right now, the computer industry is in the, in the tank. Uh, personal computers, big computers, everything. And uh, it's difficult, it's a difficult time, but I'm sure that Henry Ford had a few bad quarters back in the 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> and the automobile had a sort of historical imperative. It had, it, it, the minute it was invented, it, it, a sequence of events had to happen. The same is true with the personal computer. Uh, there is a, a, a tremendous momentum behind this. And I think that this year may be a delay. This year we may look back and say, well, 1985 was a slow year, but it, there is such momentum behind this that it will happen. It will permeate and change forever our educational processes. And my hope again is that not too many generations of students will pass through before this happens. Uh, it will happen within 20 years. It probably will happen within 10 years, but it could happen within five years. I am uh, going back to the United States this weekend, uh, and then uh, about uh, two weeks from today, I'll be in the Soviet Union for the first time in Moscow. 
because one of my dreams has been to uh, sell Macintoshes in the Soviet Union. <laughs> and uh, one of the highest agendas, agendas on my uh, priority is to, uh, is to get uh, them starting to think about exactly the same thing. So maybe six months or a year, year and a half from now, we can have some uh, Soviet schools here at our <laughs> Europe consortium meeting. Jeff is worth about 150